We'll move on to the next presentation. Um, you do see the cover slide already. Um, it's about automated pinning systems um, managed a lot by the um, senior manager of business development for Ram Spreaders. Going to give us an insight into that. Um, I'm really excited to um, see this part of automation moving forward. Mommy. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining our presentation. I hope you are safe and well. I'm Mani Chalapa, Business Development Manager at Ram Spreaders. Our company supplies the pin smart system to automate twist lock handling, also called pinning in container key crane operations. Let me quickly run through the agenda for this uh, webinar presentation. Uh, next slide, please. First, we define pinning as it is done today all over the world, then some key points to put manual pinning in perspective, then the benefits of automated pinning, which is pending implementation. Then we look at why automated pinning invites skepticism. Lastly, I talk about our technology that would make automated pinning a reality. Next slide, please. Each crane gets two workers for pinning duties. The crane lifts containers of the vessel and the workers remove twist locks from the containers as they are held up. When loading the vessel, the process is reversed. Containers are brought from the yard and suspended the same way for twist locks to be installed before the crane puts the containers on the vessel. Pinning is obviously a hazardous job. Next slide, please. Cranes do about 30 moves an hour. That's roughly between one and a half to two and a half minutes per move or cycle. An average of 30 to 60 seconds of that is taken up by pinning. Cause of engaging pinning workers in Southeast Asia and Western countries are about USD $20 um, US $20 per hour in Southeast Asia and US uh, $75 per hour uh, in the West. Uh, this is an average uh, amount. And um, whether it is too much or too little is not the point of this presentation. In any case, ports would prefer to do the work in a safer way and automate if possible. The point is that the pinning portion of cycle times cannot be improved if uh, manual handling continues. Pinning is a one task. Next slide, please. Thanks. Pinning is a one task in container operations that, is, that remains unchanged amidst fast growth in technology, port capacity, and maritime traffic. This is despite of all the benefits that automated pinning would give. What are the benefits? Occupation safety, obviously. Speed machines are definitely faster and offer consistency. Security, it is worth the effort to minimize access to port facilities. And automation keeps work running even in times of restricted labor mobility like now. Next slide, please. Skepticism against automated pinning is based on the idea of a one-size machine that caters to all permutations and immune to existing bad practices. To design an automated alternative for pinning, we had to overcome expectations to produce a machine of definitive form, something like a straddle carrier or an AGV. However, container operation is a very complex affair. Also to note, twist lock inventory is almost always not very organized. Next slide, please. A container vessel uses up to three twist lock types, and it is rare indeed to see vessels that keep them properly segregated. In pinning, precise action upon each container is very, very important. Precise how? 40 foot containers in the hatch, no twist locks to be uh, put on. 40 foot deck containers, twist locks must be put on. Two times 20 on the deck of a standard bay, use four semi. Uh, auto twist locks or four auto twist locks. Auto twist locks if the vessel happens to be using auto twist locks. Two times uh, 20 back to back on deck, use two semi auto twist locks plus two mid locks per 20 foot container. That means you mix two types of twist locks on the same box. A 45 footer loaded on a 40 footer twist lock installation is different from 45 loaded onto another 45. Fitting a wrong twist lock or fitting a twist lock in the wrong way or fixing a twist lock when not supposed to or the reverse all lead to painful delay in undoing the error. Leaving a twist lock unremoved from discharge containers leads to serious accidents in the stacking yard. 
all the above apply with just three two slot types to contend with. Uh, in other words, when working upon one well organized vessel, just one ship. Next slide, please. And then there are more than 50 different types of twist locks in, the, in circulation and a few more new ones are in the market every few years. And uh, vessel owners decide which twist lock models to use, uh, you know, ports have no say in this. Therefore, workers need to be familiar with all these types and how each can and cannot be used. You can imagine what is required of an automated fitting solution. As for vessels, they birth in and out of ports and load and discharge containers only. It is established that the port should deal with twist locks and their problems. Uh, next slide, please. It is not uncommon to see vessels maintain twist lock bins with the contents looking like this. If you look closely, there are at least eight different models of twist locks all mixed up in the bin. Maybe there's more. The picture of this bin was taken during container operations. This is indeed a common sight on the wharf. Suffice to say that twist locks get mixed over time if the crew fails to regularly organize their inventory. How do twist locks get mixed up? Next slide, please. Cranes alternate between vessels moving back and forth between them. A very critical feature of a productive wharf. Twist lock bins and twist lock heaps also move about on the wharf to keep up with the crane positions. Inevitably, twist locks of different vessels get mixed up in the process. Since we are talking about automation, it goes without saying that automated solutions that come to be implemented needs, uh, need to allow cranes to alternate between vessels uh, to maintain productivity while somehow also preventing twist locks from different vessels from getting mixed up. So that, that is a requirement you know, for, for an automation to fulfill. Next slide, please. One of our customers said to us that if you have seen one port, you have just seen one port, really. Now. While uh, looking quite the same and using similar machines, the work methods and conditions differ even between berths within a specific facility. Expectations of a one-form machine needs to give way to a modular solution with separable modules or features such that these modules are put back together in different forms to suit the preferred method of operation. RAM spreaders has intended each feature of the PinSmart system to be scaled up, changed, or even removed to suit the working criteria. To date, we have received queries from prospective customers with strong interest in one, a PinSmart system attached to the crane, and two, a remote pinning station to be positioned at the front and back of the group of cranes that make a berth. So what is PinSmart? At the core, it is a set of complex programs that control standard off-shelf robots and a set of pinning tools that can be expanded upon. In robot speak, these pinning tools are called end defectors. Next, please. This is our prototype in Singapore, which we use to test our pinning tool designs. I wish to direct your attention to the set of quick change pinning tools and the master unit that holds the pinning tools. The master unit allows the pinning tools to be effective even when twist locks are out positioned by up to 20 millimeters. The PinSmart robot is shown picking up, installing and removing two types of twist locks and changing over between the relevant pinning tools. The invisible master of the PinSmart is a set of highly developed programs that directs the robots to, in sequence, pick the correct pinning tool the correct storage slot and take position at the corners at, as needed. What you see here was completed two years ago and we have since moved from designing for functionality to refining pinning tool designs to be more robust and compact and ready for the market. The, pinning system, the pin smart system is open to upgrade with new pinning tools to suit future two slot models. We have so far classified twist locks in groups um, and have designed eight end effectors as shown in that chart. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Next slide, please. 
REM spreaders envision one necessary version of PinSmart to work on key crane platforms fitted with container cradles. Thankfully, cranes with work platforms and container support cradles have already come into use. We think this has paved the way to a fast track development of automated pinning. There are both single trolley and double trolley versions of such key cranes. The PinSmart system can be installed on either type. Take note that the robots work concurrently with the spreader, therefore not holding up the spreader by making it wait for pinning action upon the container. As for management of stored twist locks and their movement between cranes, the PinSmart system can be programmed to work off transferable storage cassettes. We can also equip PinSmart with smart vision technology paired with special tools to work off the vessel bin. In effect, using the bin itself as a transferable storage device. I'll show you that in a moment. Next slide, please. Another pin smart version that we can put together is a remote pinning station on the WAF. Ideally, the remote station is at the end of the crane group serving a vessel. This will be a drive through station with dynamic position sensors and shape recognition to identify twist locks as the transporter comes to a stop within the station. The station is lined with pinning cells and sorting cells on both sides of the station driveway. Pinning cells consist of a pin smart robot, interchangeable pinning tools, shape recognition means at fixed points and storage cassettes. Sorting cells are equipped with object recognition means also at fixed position and pin smart robots with special tools to fill up storage cassettes with twist locks from the vessel pins. On conclusion of vessel operations, unused twist locks in the storage cassettes are put back in the pins. A cassette depository can be configured as shown or it can be as the customer wants it to be. The PinSmart system is meant to be integrated with the terminal operating system or TOS and receive real-time instruction to keep operations moving smoothly. Um, in short, as long as the system knows the sequence, it can do the work on its own, prepare the uh, pinning tools and be ready for the next container that's coming into the system, either the drive-through or the crane-mounted system. That will be all from me, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, please just type it in and you'd like to know more about PinSmart, you can just email to me and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. The, um, the, the one question, um, you know, about standardization and interfaces and making it all work, uh, you've indicated uh, integration to TOS. Uh, probably the question there is, uh, is there, much like we've had it for John previously, uh, is there a certain range of, um, you know, TOS solutions that you have already integrated into? No, not yet, not just yet. What we require, uh, what the system would require is the sequence of moves uh, fed into, you know, the, 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 the processing. And uh, that's all that, that's needed, you know, it, has, it doesn't have to be any particular program. It can be even manually done. Thank you for this. Um, in the interest of time, much like uh, for all the speakers before, I'll move on to uh, a fourth speaker, which is Chiara.